Welcome to the course. Let's take a look at some of the components that make up an on-demand startup like Postmates or Uber, and then dive into a few of the different technologies that we will use to build those different components. We are on Postmates.com right now, and this is a great example of really just the most simple element of an on-demand startup, which is, hey, here's your address, we're going to give you something in minutes, not days, not weeks. So as soon as we enter in any address, we see two things. First, the item or product. Second, how quickly it can be to us. And that's you know as simple as it sounds, really what an on-demand startup's all about. It's this time right here. How can we get this item to you as quickly as possible? This requires knowing current location and a lot of really complex stuff in the background, like having a courier network of people, knowing where they are on the map and being able to actually estimate the time it takes to drive across the city to deliver this item. So there's a lot of really important things happening behind the scenes here, but ultimately what that ends up for the user being is just a pretty simple user experience. Like, hey, I want this crispy taco. I have the ability to, in Postmates, break down the different products I can get, special instructions, just like checking out anywhere else. But the main difference is that I can get this right away. And I, it looks like I have to log in here. But if we go back to the main page, we can see all of these different places and their various times that it will take to get them to my door. Some of them, in San Francisco at least, are just about 20 minutes to get to my door, which is really great, especially when you're hungry. And that's why a lot of on-demand startups like Postmates and Caviar are thriving right now because people are now uh, creating this new connection in their head of, hey, I'm hungry now, or I need this item. And these companies have developed the infrastructure to be able to actually deliver in a very quick and efficient manner. Now, what makes something like Postmates different from a company like Uber? Well, there really isn't too, too much of a difference. Uber just adds an additional complexity because it's really still estimating, hey, it's going to take this long to get to this location. But the only difference is that at that location, instead of dropping off a plate full of tacos, you are getting in a car and then the service is a different service than just dropping off a product. That service is taking you across town and estimating how much time that will take with a bunch of different factors calculated up to a certain price. So what we're going to do in this course is we're gonna start with the Postmates model and we're gonna gradually build up to something a little bit more complex a little bit more like Uber, but at the end of the day, an on-demand startup is something that we'd recommend starting closer to Postmates and not as close as Uber, um, because Uber is really just a zero-sum game. People are looking for cheap rides across town, and many, many startups, uh, probably close to 10 to 12, have tried to compete with Uber directly, and they've failed. Meanwhile, on-demand startups like Postmates and Caviar, they've given off a, a impression that there are so many different opportunities in this space that neither Postmates or Instacart will be able to fulfill all of these needs. That's why on-demand startups are really hot right now. There are on-demand startups, especially in San Francisco, that will bring you everything from medical marijuana to ice cream to cookies, and they all have a really specialized product that allows them to thrive. So if you're thinking about creating an on-demand startup and you don't have ideas, we're gonna go through that in this course and hopefully get you on the path to building a profitable app. The other thing that's really important here is how we're going to build the app when it comes to web versus mobile. Because in a lot of our courses, we build web first experiences, um, but because we're dealing with an on-demand economy, we really need to focus on building a mobile experience for this application. And although I'm on a Postmates site to demonstrate that you know this is a possibility, um, Postmates, Instacart, Caviar, all of those different services are usually mainly used on a cell phone because you're either out at a friend's house, you're, you're sitting on your couch, 
and the interface is so simple that you can really get it done quickly on a phone. And also that last mile of a delivery involves either a text message or a phone call uh, between the driver and yourself to get the food in your hands. So what tools are we going to use in this course? The first one is going to be Webflow. And this is a tool we've never used before, but it's really awesome and I'm excited to dive into it because the web platform that we're going to need as a homepage, even before we launch, needs to be something beautiful enough to bring users to our platform and sign up for updates. Really, we want them to hand over something like a phone number or email address so that we can let them know when our app is live. And so we're going to use Webflow to create a really beautiful looking landing page to attract people to send that out. Um, and it's also fully responsive so we can also use it on mobile, which is going to be really crucial when it comes to sending them eventually to the App Store on either Google Play or iOS to download the application and use the app. The next tool we'll be using is Bubble. And we'll be using Bubble in a bit of a different way because instead of using Bubble, the drag and drop code builder to build a web app, we're going to build just fully a mobile app and a mobile app only inside of the Bubble uh, interface. So we're gonna use Bubble to kind of cover everything from building a on-demand platform to integrating with different services to handling requests. We're going to build the really the bulk of our functionality inside of Bubble. Um, and the reason why we're separating out Webflow and Bubble is that we can just focus on just a mobile experience inside of our Bubble application. And we're also going to be using Zapier because Zapier is a tool that connects to other services. And the big one that we're going to be connecting to here is text messaging, meaning we need to send out texts, we need to figure out how to integrate um, and uh, process a lot of different uh, items. And we also need to text people when our app is ready. So we're gonna be using Zapier to connect our applications to more mobile components via services like Twilio. So we're gonna get started just kind of in a linear direction because before we build the app, we're going to need to build the website. And we're gonna talk a little bit, little bit more about how we're going to get all of these different components together so that we can get kind of a, a user experience plan in place. So in the first lesson, we're gonna be focusing on Webflow. So before you click next, head over to webflow.com and sign up for a free account and we will meet you back here in a bit.